All right, so let's start this broadcast with the biggest story that is unfolding right now. The Taliban have now captured Kabul. They have also taken over the presidential palace. Declaring victory over the Afghan government, dozens of Taliban fighters entered inside of, these, of the presidential palace. Now, this, of course, was a video that was reportedly shared by the Taliban with Al Jazeera. The Taliban fighters could be seen inside of the Afghan presidential palace. A Taliban official has also said that the group will soon be declaring the Islamic Emirate of Afghanistan from the presidential palace in Kabul. Now, that is, of course, the name of the country that it was in under the rule of the Taliban between the years 1996 till 2001, before the Taliban were ousted from Afghanistan post the 9-11 attacks. And also in a symbolic bid, the Taliban has said that it will also be changing the flag of Afghanistan and replace it with its own white flag. Now, calling for peaceful relations with the international community, Taliban's political spokesperson, Mohammed Naeem, has declared that the war in Afghanistan is now over and that the foreign forces will not repeat their failed experience in Afghanistan once again. He further added that the Taliban did not want to live in isolation and the type of rule and the form of regime will become clear pretty soon. He also added that the group wants to establish peaceful relations and develop several channels of communications globally. Now, the Taliban claims to have adopted a policy of non-interference in the affairs of other nations and this is in return for non-interference by other nations into its own policies within Afghanistan. Now, speaking on Ashraf Ghani, Mohammed Naeem said that Ashraf Ghani's escape was unexpected and even those who were close to him did not expect that the former Afghan president would actually leave Afghanistan in the manner that he did. Now, after the Taliban overran much of the country in a matter of days and pushed into the capital, the Taliban is now holding talks that are aimed, this is what the Taliban are claiming, that are aimed at forming an inclusive government within Afghanistan. Now, earlier, a Taliban official had said that the group will be announcing a new government pretty soon from the presidential palace, but those plans appear to be on hold. <laughs> The Kawas Mustachi in Chihano does most work rally. The Kawas Mustachi Padiabani Motala Kiru. The Kawas Pavras Baba Padiki Mujak Takiru. The Kach Muj Senna the Pul Milat Kizmat, our the Pul Milat Amyat, our the Dui the Yundu the Zindagi, our the Aram, our Paindaki the Wasedo, Itminan, Serakamur Kawalisu. I think uh, an Afghan inclusive government. This is uh, the demand, the will, and the want of the people of Afghanistan. They want this government that uh, you, you may have seen that when uh, ever we entered the provincial cities, people uh, thronged along uh, the roads uh, and queued up the, along the roads and they were welcoming our uh, forces. So it is a popular uprising uh, as a result of uh, that. Uh, uh, we, we, the, all the provinces uh, uh, fell to us and uh, because of the support of the people, uh, we were able uh, to have resistance against uh, occupation for 20 years. Now, the military units of the Taliban have also entered Kabul to provide security. Meanwhile, Afghanistan's president, Ashraf Ghani, who, remember, has left the nation, has confirmed that he has indeed left Afghanistan in a post that he put out on Facebook. Ashraf Ghani said that he actually left Afghanistan to prevent a flood of blood in Kabul. Now, his statement reads, and I quote Ashraf Ghani here, the Taliban have made it to remove me and they are here to attack all Kabul and the people of Kabul in order to avoid the bleeding flood, I thought it would be best to get out. The Taliban have won the judgment of swords and guns, and now they are responsible for protecting the countrymen's honor, wealth, and self-esteem. They are now facing a new historical test. Either they will protect the name and honor of Afghanistan, or they will prioritize other places and networks. I will continue to serve my nation with an intellectual moment, and will also plan to develop.
Now, to give us more insights in terms of what's actually happening in Afghanistan and to help us understand better what, what could unfold in the country, we're joined in by Mr. Tariq Farhadi. He's a former Afghan government advisor who's presently joining us live from Geneva. Mr. Farhadi, thank you very much indeed, sir, for joining us on this broadcast and beyond. Now, let me begin by asking you this. The Taliban have declared victory. They've said that the war is over. But give us a sense, you know, as, as someone who is an Afghan, but give us, a, give us a sense of what could now unfold with the Taliban in control of Kabul. Uh, greetings. Look, in the past uh, 16 hours, there hasn't been security incidents in Kabul. And I take this uh, as a good omen. Uh, Kabul right now is the place where tens of thousands of refugees from northern Afghanistan are sleeping in parks and streets. These are people who had fled the fighting in northern Afghanistan from the Taliban onslaught in Kunduz and Tahar and the Mr. Ghani's government's aerial bombings on their homes. And uh, these people are in Kabul. Any type of security incident in Kabul would have been devastating. But security prevails this morning in Kabul, and that's good news. Uh, at this point of time, do you think there will be any kind of reprisal by the Taliban on those people who are opposed to the rise of the Taliban in the last few weeks? We hope not. We hope that the declarations that the Taliban leaders have made, uh, in their declarations, they have said that there shouldn't be any reprisals, uh, there shouldn't be any quick judgment on anything, and uh, they have made uh, statements uh, as to uh, establishing an order. People are respecting that. The Taliban had a harsh rule from 1995 to 2001, and uh, people fear the Taliban. Uh, uh, this is one of the reasons there hasn't been any looting in Kabul uh, so far. Uh, there are very minor reports of um, government people eventually looting their own offices uh, because they saw an opportunity, uh, but very minor reports. Kabul has been stable. This is very good news. And also, you know, going a, a bit back in terms of what has been happening in Afghanistan, uh, are you surprised at the pace with which and also the ease with which the Taliban were able to take over the entire country in some places virtually without a fight? Ashraf Ghani led a, a corrupt administration. He... Um, uh, uh, didn't pay the salaries of the soldiers in Afghanistan. Afghanistan had 300,000 soldiers. The people around Ashraf Ghani kept the money for their own pockets, didn't send the salaries of the soldiers. This has been documented by many uh, credible press outlets and also the Special Inspector General on Afghanistan reconstruction. In the end, there were no 300,000 soldiers and there were ghost soldiers and Ashraf Ghani was still pocketing this money and the people around him. Ashraf Ghani is a fugitive president of Afghanistan. We must now look how much money he has taken with him from the Central Bank of Afghanistan. There are anecdotes that his associates were carrying bags full of dollars yesterday mm -hmm. and uh, in the rush two bags uh, uh, amounting to about 45 million dollars were left at the airport in the last minute from his convoy uh, uh, afghanistan has a lot of repair work to do uh, we don't know how the taliban will govern how they will f uh, fare uh, we must stay optimistic we must give taliban um, um, a few days to see how this goes. If there is no uh, violence in Kabul in the next few days, uh, right. then I think we are um, in a good situation. You know, I'll talk to you a bit about the future of Afghanistan, but I want to dwell a bit more, you know, in, in the manner in which the Taliban was able to carry out this blitz of their campaign. Um, you brought up this issue of ghost soldiers where divisions simply did not exist, which the Afghan government claimed they did. Do you think the Americans were aware of the fact that there was such widespread corruption within the Afghan army? 
and soldiers who reportedly were recruited, who were being paid for, simply did not exist on the ground. Were the Americans aware of this? Yes, the Americans were aware of this. Uh, there were reports, um, um, uh, including uh, open public reports, uh, uh, written by SIGAR, uh, which is the uh, Special in Inspector General for Afghanistan Reconstruction. And these reports had surfaced since a couple of years ago. And um, I think this was one of the reasons uh, Trump, uh, who was sort of a populist uh, president, uh, when uh, he saw as a non-politician these reports, he reacted and he decided to get out of Afghanistan. Because the politicians in the United States knew these things. Uh, uh, and, uh, mm, you know, in an enterprise of accepting uh, some of the uh, disease in order to uh, protecting the, the larger uh, uh, good of what was America's strategy then, um, uh, they accepted all of that. But Trump was a businessman and he uh, uh, saw at these reports, he looked at these reports probably and he said, no, this can't go on. And, and uh, this is how he... Uh, disengaged from uh, this uh, costly adventure uh, for uh, Americans in Afghanistan. Please uh, consider that uh, um, America has sent over 20 years, $87 billion of military aid to Afghanistan. And this army just evaporated and all the Humvees and American equipment are now um, in the hands of the Taliban. but. Uh, uh, before uh, the conquest of the Taliban two or three days ago, um, two, uh, a week ago, mm -hmm. some uh, Amer Afghan soldiers fled to Iran driving these American Humvees and, uh, and uh, Ford Rangers. And uh, these images uh, were uh, appalling to see for uh, American congressmen in Washington, D.C., that their taxpayer money is now going to Iran. So, right. yes... A lot of paradigms have shifted in what has happened in Afghanistan. Absolutely, but indeed. The, the manner is, in which the Afghan army effectively evaporated with the advance of the Taliban is something that will be talked about and debated a lot in the future. But I also want you to weigh in on how the Taliban will now behave. You know, back when the Taliban was in power between 1996 till 2001, the Taliban effectively led a pariah state. They were recognized only by Pakistan, Saudi Arabia and the United Arab Emirates. Will the Taliban change this time round? And is there any indication at all to go by what they've been doing so far to indicate that the Taliban that has now seized control of Afghanistan will be different from the Taliban of the yesteryears? Will the Taliban be different? Please let me answer this question in a few weeks. Uh, but um, for now, let's give them the benefit of the doubt for a few days. We will be watching very carefully. Uh, uh, will the international community recognize the Taliban? Yes, the answer is yes. Uh, I will explain. Uh, in uh, Today morning in New York, there will be a, a Security Council meeting about Afghanistan, mm -hmm. uh, where the United Nations will cause, will sound the alarm about the humanitarian situation, will appeal for uh, budget for humanitarian aid for Afghanistan because 18 million Afghans um, are, are, are in a poverty situation and 9 million children are in hunger situation in right. Afghanistan. And um, China has already indicated that um, it will recognize Taliban as a partner. China is a member of the uh, UN Security Council. Right. Russia has indicated that Taliban will be part of Afghanistan's future. Uh, it will probably uh, accept Taliban. Pakistan will probably accept Taliban. Iran will probably accept Taliban. In this region, what's important is China, Russia, Iran, Pakistan for Afghanistan. So That's, that's an uh, interesting point, yes. Uh, and yes, also, uh, one, one other question, because we are short of time. Uh, Mr. Farhadi, this, this war has also been described as a war against women. So what is the future of women in Afghanistan now that the Taliban are in charge? In Herat, in the past couple of days, the Taliban who had taken over the city of Herat a few days ago have asked the woman to go back home, uh, those who work outside, and they have asked the woman to... Uh, the, from the university to, to not to attend for now. So this could be because it's a war situation, it's a security situation. But 
we must stay vigilant. The Taliban have promised this time that they will let women work outside. They have to. It's an economic factor. In Afghanistan, there are 700,000 households who have lost their men in war, and women go to work to bring the bread back for the family. These people need to be allowed to work. Women need to allow, allow, be allowed to attend education. Uh, it's an economic factor uh, that women are partners in social development in any country, including Afghanistan. We will watch this vigilantly. And um, in case um, uh, we see the difficulties, we will continue the combat outside Afghanistan, inside Afghanistan, to extract these rights from Taliban um, uh, for the women. Uh, but I hope that the Taliban have realized, according to what I've been listening and reading, and I spend a lot of time following everything, that this mm -hmm. time, um, there won't be a harsh treatment of women as we had seen 25 years ago. All right, that, that is something that we'll, of course, have to wait and see as to how the Taliban actually conducts itself, although it claims that it has changed from what it was earlier. Thank you very much indeed, Mr. Tariq Farhadi, for joining us from Geneva. Beyond is now available in your country. Download the app now and get all the news on the move.